Lesson 2.8 adjusts quotients if our estimate is high or low. This entire chapter is about long division and dividing. If you missed the previous lessons, they're linked in the description. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. They undo each other. We can use multiplication to determine if our estimate of a partial quotient is too high or too low. We multiply our estimate by the divisor, and if the product is greater than the dividend, our estimate is too high. We have 897 divided by 32. We estimate 900 divided by 30 is equal to 30. So we try putting a 3 up here in the tens place because 30 is 3 tens. And 32 times 3 tens is 96 tens. And 96 is too high to subtract from 89. We multiply the divisor by one less to adjust the quotient. So we try multiplying by 2. And 32 times 2 tenths is 64 tenths. And we can subtract that. We get 25 tenths. So putting the 3 up here as the partial quotient was too great. We couldn't subtract the 96 from the 89. So we adjusted and made it a 2. And now we could subtract. And multiplication on scratch paper can help. We can try 32 times 3, and we get 96 tens, and that's too high. So we adjust it and multiply times 2. We get 64 tens, so that was just right. Now we have 257 divided by 32. We try 32 times 6 to see if a 6 can fit there. We get 192. Mm, that's kind of low. We can fit another 32 in there. So we adjust it and we try 32 times 7. We get 224. That's still low. We try 32 times 8. That's 256. That's very close to 257. That would be a good number to subtract. We get a 1. Our answer is 28 remainder 1. Here we have 495 divided by 16. We estimate 400 divided by 20 is equal to 20, so we have two tens. So we try putting a 2 here. When we do 16 times 2, we get 32. But then when we subtract, we get 17 tens. And 32 is too low because the difference is greater than the divisor. When we subtracted, we got a 17. We could fit one more 16 into that 49. We multiply the divisor by one more to adjust the quotient. We try 16 times 3, which is equal to 48. That's a good number to subtract. We get a 1, and now it's the 5's turn to drop down. We have a 15. But 16 cannot fit into 15. It fits 0 times, so we put a 0 up here in the 1's place. And 16 times 0 is 0. We subtract the 0 and get a 15 again, so that's our remainder. The difference 15 is less than the divisor 16, so it's good. If the difference is greater than or equal to the divisor, our estimate is too low, and we could have fit one more divisor amount into the dividend. So using easy numbers, we have 17 divided by 5. If we put a 2 here, then we do 5 times 2 is 10, and we subtract and get a 7. That means another 5 could have fit into there. So no, we can fit one more 5. We adjust it and make it a 3 instead. Then we do 5 times 3 is 15. We subtract and get a 2. This 2 is less than the divisor 5, so yes, that works. We have 3 remainder 2. And if we try 178 divided by 51, we try using a 2. 51 times 2 is 102. We subtract and get 76. Mm, that's greater than the divisor. That means we can fit one more 51. So we adjust the quotient to be a 3, and 51 times 3 is 153. And when we subtract, we get 25, which is less than the divisor. So yes, that works. So be careful. If your estimate is too low, you might be able to fit one more divisor amount into it. So here I have a long division problem broken into several steps. Here's the problem. 
5,209 divided by 17. So we're going to start with our first step. 17 cannot fit into 5, into this 5,000. So the answer is not going to go above the 5. 17 can fit into 52 hundreds. We can do a little multiplication. 17 times 2 is 34. That's too low. We try 17 times 3. That's 51. That would be a good amount to subtract from 52. So we use 3. 17 fits into 52 hundreds three times. Because we're fitting it into the 52 hundreds, the 3 goes above the hundreds place. 17 times 3 is 51. We found that. We subtract it and we get a 1. Now we drop down the 0. We have 10 tens here. And 17 fits into 10 tens 0 times. We can't fit a 17 into that. So we put a 0 above the tens place. And 17 times 0 is 0. So we multiply 17 times 0, which is 0. We have a 0 up here. And 17 times 0 is 0, so we write 0 here. We subtract it. We drop down. We get 10 tens again, but now it's the 9's turn to come down. We drop down that 9. We need to see how many 17's can fit into 109. We try 17 times 5. That's 85. That's kind of low to subtract from 109. We could possibly get another 17 in there. So we try 17 times 6, which is equal to 102. That would be a good amount to subtract from 109. So we have a 6. We put a 6 above the 9 here that dropped down. And we subtract 17 times 6, which is 102. We get a 7. So 7 is our remainder. Our quotient is 306, and we have a remainder of 7. Here we have 2,964 divided by 82. 82 cannot fit into this 2, so the answer is not going to go above here. 82 cannot fit into 29 hundreds, so it's not going to go above the 9. But 82 can fit into 296 tens. We do a little multiplication on the side. 82 times 4 would be 328 tens. That would be too much to subtract from 296 tens. So that's too high. So we lower the 4 to be a 3. 82 times 3 is 246 tens. That's a good amount to subtract. And we get 50 tens. Now it's the 4's turn to come down. So we have 504 divided by 82. So now, because this is a 504, we know it's going to be greater than that 3. So we try 82 times 5. That's 410. That's a little low. We could probably fit another 82 in there. We do 82 times 6, which is 492. That's a good amount to subtract. So we put a 6 up here, and 82 times 6 is 492. We subtract and get a 12. We have a remainder of 12. So we can adjust our partial quotients up or down by 1, and we can check with multiplication to see if it's reasonable. Let's try it again. Here we have 5,763 divided by 27. 27 cannot fit into this 5, so the answer is not going to go above the 5. 27 can fit into 57 hundreds. We do 27 times 2, that's 54. That's a good amount to subtract from 57, so we put a 2 up here. We subtract, we get a 3. Now it's the 6's turn to drop down, and 27 fits into 36 tens one time, because 27 times 1 is 27. So we put a 1 up here above the 6, and we put our 27 here for 27 times 1. We subtract and get a 9, and now it's the 3's turn to drop down. 27 can fit into 93. We do a little math. We try 27 times 3, which is 81. And we've got a 93. If we try 27 times 4, we get 108. That's too high to subtract from 93. So 3 is a good number. 
We put a 3 up here, and 27 times 3 is 81. We subtract it, and we get a 12. So we can try multiplying 27 times 4 to see if one more 27 can fit into the 93, but it becomes too high. So we use 27 times 3. And that's equal to 81, so we can subtract 93 minus 81, which will be equal to 12. Now when we were doing this, instead of multiplying 27 times 4, after we multiplied 27 times 3, we could just add a 27 to this 81. If that's 3 27s and we add one more, that would be 4 27s. That would be 108. We can add 27 to the product of 27 times 3 to find 27 times 4. And we could actually add another 27 down here to the 108 if we wanted to know what 27 times 5 was. Because then we would have 3, 4, 5 together. See? Mrs. Kim's Bakery sold 1,044 cookies in 30 days. How many dozens did she sell? So we think a dozen is equal to 12. So we need to divide 1,044 by 12. We have 1,044 divided by 12. 12 cannot fit into this one, so the answer is not going to go above the one. 12 cannot fit into 10 hundreds, so it's not going to go above the zero for the 10. 12 can fit into 104 tens. How many times though? So we try 12 times 7, which is equal to 84. That's a little low to subtract from 104. We try 12 times 8, that's 96. That would be a good amount to subtract from 104. And we do. We put an 8 up here because that's the one we are using. And we subtract the 96, we get an 8. It's the 4's turn to come down. Now we have 84 divided by 12. And we saw that 12 times 7 was 84, so we know that's going to be a 7. We subtract it and get a 0. Now, when we were at 12 times 8 equals 96, we could have tried one more and tried 12 times 9 just to make sure that we can or cannot fit one more 12 into this 104. And 12 times 9 was too high, so we went back and said, yes, that 8 was the best choice. So it's 87 dozen cookies. Now, be careful. It says in 30 days up here, and you might see this number 30 and think you need to do 1,044 divided by 30. Make sure you understand what the question's asking you. It wants to know how many dozens did she sell. The fact that the cookies were sold in 30 days is unnecessary information. We don't even need it. Mrs. Kim's Bakery sold 1,015 cupcakes in five weeks. If the same number of cupcakes were sold each day, how many were sold in one day? So we think. The problem told us how many were sold in weeks, but it wants an answer in a day. Well, one week is equal to seven days. Five weeks times seven days is equal to 35 days. So that's going to be our divisor, 35. We have 1,015 divided by 35. 35 cannot fit into this 1, so the answer is not going to go above the 1. 35 cannot fit into 10 hundreds, so it's not going to go above the 0 for the 10. But 35 could fit into 101 tens. How many times? We try 35 times 3, that's 105. That's too high to subtract from 101. So we adjust it and try 35 times 2, that's 70. So we can put a 2 above the 1 for the 101, and 35 times 2 is 70, so that's what we're going to subtract. We get a 31 tens. Now it's the 5's turn to come down. 315 divided by 35. We try 35 times 8. That's 280. That's a little too low to subtract from 315. We want to see if we can get one more 35 in there, so we try 35 times 9, and that is 315. So we know a 9 goes up here. We subtract the 35 times 9 equals 315. We get a 0, and we know that that is 29 cupcakes that are sold in one day. So be very careful when it asks how many are sold in a day or an hour or a month when it gives 
the information in a different increment like years or months or days. Okay? So just be careful you answer exactly what it's asking of you. Here we have 729 divided by 51. So we choose a high estimate of 20 and a low estimate of 10 for our first digit. If we try 51 times 2 for our high estimate, we get 102. That is too high to subtract from 72 tens. We try our low estimate of 10, so we put a 10 here, and 51 times 1 is 51. We subtract 51 tens from 72 tens, and we get 21 tens. Now it's the 9's turn to come down. We have 219 divided by 51, and we can do a little math on the side. 51 times 4 is 204, so that would be a good number to put up here. And we know it's 204, so that's what we're going to subtract, and we get a 15. We have 14, remainder 15. And our remainder is less than the divisor, so we know we're okay. We know it's good. Doing a little math on the side on scratch paper is very helpful because not only do we know that 4 was a good number, but we already have the product to be able to subtract it. In our next lesson, 2.9, we're going to solve some word problems with division, and we're going to use the strategy, draw a diagram. Stay focused, have a wonderful day, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.